all right we're back on the applicator fingers crossed it's actually going to be done within the next couple days hopefully by sunday at the latest there's really not a whole lot left to do um all the parts are here except for i'll have to get hose and stuff to go from the tank to the car to the toolbar once we get the hitch made and i figure out what i need in that respect um but this is the hitch for the tank cart um these are made by a company in ohio called wallace forge uh same setup we have dad actually bought some stuff that's how we knew about them he bought a hitch and a uh, bar from them when we built the grain cart all them years ago so this is basically the same setup just the next category heavier um but this is a with this hitch it'd be a one two three and yeah, four position um so that's that this is gonna be the have to make this is a weld on top link ball um gonna have to make a plate that kind of matches this profile a little bit so we got some more meat besides right here um but that'll be on the hitch on the toolbar so we'll go like that um, i'm gonna have to make a little spacer to go in here to take the the chuck the chuck out of it um but that was the whole point of using something like this and and doing all this was to keep it nice and tight hang on so anyhow that takes care of all the hitch stuff and then this is all of my fittings for well, almost all of the fittings for my fill and setup and everything that goes on the cart believe it or not i'll have to go back and look at some of the prices i think it was actually cheaper to buy this stuff through the john deere dealer i'm, I'm pretty sure because i did not spend nearly as much money up there for the fittings i bought is what i thought i would have so i was kind of impressed with that so anyhow we need where is everything should be in here so we need that stuff we need this we need this so we're gonna work on this today so hopefully i can get a bracket put together and painted dad's got a cylinder project going on so i need Let me clean me off a work spot real quick. All right, we're just going to loosely assemble everything here for now so that I can get an idea of what we need to come up with for a bracket. I really don't understand and wish they, why they don't and I wish they would put some sort of interface on these strainer baskets that you can like have some threaded holes or something. So you got a way to mount them. They got they got these bosses in here like they had thought about it, but there's and you can't drill through right there because you get that ain't gonna work because you're gonna drill a hole in it. And we want this. That's going to be open, so we want that facing backwards. Size pushing. Do a two inch coupling. 
to match the hose on the nurse tank. So that's the monstrosity we end up with. So now I need to figure out the best way to bracket all this together and I'm just going to make the bracket bolt to the drawbar um, on the cart. That way if we ever change carts or do something different, all you got to do for this setup is to unbolt it, take it off, slap it on whatever else you're going to run and away you go. Oh, I should not have got a banjo cap though. I don't like banjo caps. The green leaf caps have locks on them so that when you, of course on this it's just a dust cap, it really doesn't matter, but on the green leaf ones when you put this on, they got little spring loaded buttons on them that when you lock them shut, there's little lock pins that hold the levers shut. For some reason banjo doesn't do that. I didn't even pay any attention when I bought it, otherwise I wouldn't have got that now that I got a green leaf one from the Rural King. Of course they probably don't have them. They didn't have anything else when I needed it. But anyhow, let me figure up a bracket here. I wish I'd have kept my, I had a drawing with this bolt pattern and stuff for that valve that we mounted on the back of the toolbar. I wish I'd have kept it because that would make life easier for doing it again. All right, so I've got a plan. Um, all I'm gonna do is uh, same thing like I did on the back of the toolbar, make a bracket that catches these four bolts so we can bolt through on the uh, valve here. And then I'm just gonna make a bracket just with a hole in it big enough for this uh, collar that's molded into the strainer basket to just go through. Because all this one up here has to do is keep everything here from twisting from the weight of the hose out here so it doesn't actually have to be physically attached. And there'll just be a flat plate that lays across the draw bar and welded this and this will be welded into it and pretty simple. So take these or take this back apart so I can get some measurements for hole sizes and layout and stuff. I really wish I hadn't thrown that diagram out and or the, the drawing I had for this one. Um, but get that stuff together and then we'll do some mill work real quick and weld it together and should be fairly quick. All right, six videos in. Enough, we've done enough machine. Everybody knows the drill. Here's my drawing. These are going to be all my coordinates for. Um, yeah, these are where, my, where all my holes are going to go. Um, this one's going to be for just the big hole that the, they're going to hold the strainer basket. Um, apparently, Dad had used this piece of flat stock for something at some point. So it had a hole right smack in the middle of it, but I left that there because the hole we're going to put in should end up cutting that out. So rather than waste steel, I'm trying to cut around it. Um, so anyhow. Everybody knows the drill. Actually, we'll put you up here because it honestly probably gives you a little bit better view, maybe. Three point three four three seven five. That's 
Okay, this piece is done. Just gotta deburr it. So as far as this piece goes, we actually have to move down another quarter inch um, because the valve is three and a half square and the the center of the uh, strainer is three inches so in order to keep everything on a level plane if I was if I stayed up at an inch and three quarter for the center it would end up everything would run uphill so to keep everything level this has to move down another quarter inch and the hole gets bigger I'm not going to bust the drill bit off going halfway into that big hole that's already in it. Or, well, little hole. sake of conserving time I worked ahead on you a little bit and got my mounting plate I really need to get a new mag base mount here before spring because this one's about had it I've never really liked it I just put up with it because it's the one I had but that was one of those last minute purchases when I got a new camera and it, it looked good I mean a mag base mounts definitely handy it's just that one sucks but anyhow um got my base plate made I just want while well, before I go welding stuff on it while well, it's still easy to transfer holes I wanted to get this part done Unfortunately, the plate is not thick enough to use a use an actual center punch or a transfer punch. I mean, so we're just gonna do it this way, and it'll be good enough. Chill it. Look, see, see what I mean? See what I mean? Sorry. This damn thing. You think it's tight, and then you move it just right, and it's like it's not even tight at all. I'm honestly surprised I haven't wiped it off a piece of equipment yet because of the way it moves around, or the way it moves around.
right, there's that. Put some gussets on there. Probably didn't need them, but that plate's thin enough that uh, I figured it's better safe than sorry. I mean, it's going to have enough... I mean, the, the channel on the frame is that dang wide, so it's going to have plenty of support on either side, but... Like I say, better safe than sorry. So, clean this thing up, get some paint or primer and paint shot on it. Probably going to go ahead and shoot it black. Um, that's a nice neutral color. And... Tomorrow we can put all this together, and once this is all on and all the plumbing's on the cart, all that's left to do is weld the new hitch on the cart, which um, my initial thought was to extend the hitch another 12 inches, but uh, I think for the sake of th keeping things simple and compact, just going to weld that or cut the, the clevis off of that that's off of what's on there and just weld this right on the end of the channel iron that's making up the tongue now and call it good and then with that on and that on the cart will be done and that's the box tube for the draw bar on the toolbar i'm probably just going to go ahead and go uh, run in the morning and get some weld on chain hooks and some probably five sixteenths grade 70 chain and weld hooks on the tube and make some brackets to weld hook or, or to put hooks on the toolbar and just right off the bat just put chains and turnbuckles um to keep or to take any side slop out of this thing and kind of pull a little bit of tension on it um basically just to be safe um and using chain rather than making actual like steel straps might look a little bit hokey ish i think i think it'll look okay but a it'll be lighter b it'll be cheaper and c it'll be easier to make adjustments rather than making straps out of steel so that's kind of my thought about using chain over flat stock or some tubing or whatever plus it makes it easy on easy off so um I know I've said this a lot in the last few videos because it's amazing how you work on a project like this and you think, you look at the part you're working on and you're like, yeah, this ain't going to take long. And then three hours later and 40 different brackets and a bunch of welding and machining later, you don't have anything done that you wanted to get done. But you get this one little, ti one little tiny thing done, like, like this right here. This just burn up almost three and a half hours of working, designing, working, engineering for something simple. But, uh, anyhow, I'm going to get that thing painted, get some of my steel chip mess cleaned up, and we'll see you guys first thing in the morning. All right, our bracket is painted, so we can get our fittings assembled. I did not end up running to town yet this morning because I figured it made more sense to get my drawbar and everything put together so that I know what, what I need, still need for hose and stuff so I could get everything all in one shot. Um, so that's the plan there, and I need all my, yeah, let me get this out of the way. All right, I might have to go track down another roll of Teflon tape. I don't think that one's going to have enough to do what I need to do, but we're going to see. That's how those go together.
there's that. And now the tea needs to go in. If it'll come back apart. Okay, here's this menagerie all assembled. Um, Phil's gonna be here to tank and to toolbar. And the reason I had to put the fill here is because you can't fill backwards through the strainer. Otherwise your strainer baskets are gonna catch stuff here and then it would end up washing right back to the toolbar. And that defeats the purpose of having a strainer basket. So, um, I guess now I can go get the forklift warming up. We could bring the tank up here and start working on that because uh, i got we got to put this on put the hitch on and i got my uh axle seals or felts or whatever whatever you want to call them all right i was going to try to work on it like this but there's just enough of a breeze kicking through that door that i'll never be able to do any welding on it so i figure since i gotta take the wheels off to finish up the hubs anyhow may as well just take them off and see if I can stuff this thing through the door it's actually supposed to be a nice day out but um, you still can't wire weld when it's windy out all right we're gonna tackle this hitch first um, there's not a whole lot of sense in cutting it off all the way back here because these make nice plates to help keep the channel iron tied together. So if you had cut it off back here, you'd have to cut out new plates to plate this together for strength anyhow. I shall leave it there since it's already there for strength. So the, the, what I'm going to do is cut this off right here flush with the end of the channel and we can just weld our... Uh, hitch channel on there um, unfortunately our plasma cutter is not I think this is like 5 8 or 3 quarter material and our plasma cutter is not rated to go that thick it'll cut actually you know what I cut some ripper shanks with it one time building the grapple for a skid steer and I think those were 1 inch I bet our plasma will cut this. I'm going to try that. I was going to try to sawzall it, but we don't have any carbide sawzall blades. But I bet our plasma will do that because I thought, I think our plasma is actually rated for one inch material. We'll give her a shot. I think I got it. It's close. There's a dang. There's a dang water softener salt bag. Yeah, you can't see it because of the glare. There's that, that white spot right there on the hill is a water softener salt bag, and apparently Teeter thinks it's a dog. But anyhow, um, I'll run up there and get it here in a minute. Uh, I think I have this probably good enough for farm equipment standards um 
same thing we we I fought putting the axle on us like what do you use to determine what's square so basically what I did I got it centered up and down um that'll give me basically a whole position up and a whole position down and it's going to be offset up or down an inch but or two inches whatever but I figured this gives me the most adjust or an equal amount of adjustment up and down rather than trying to offset it up one way or offset it up another way to get the clevis in the center and then not having enough adjustment if I needed to go one way or the other. So I just put it in the center and we can work with it. Um, so I got my center figured out and uh, jacked a corner to frame up, got the frame sitting level because the floor is not level and got this running the same level as the frame so it's straight up and down at least according to the frame being level and then measured from here to the front corners along the both ends of the or both sides of the tongue and got it measured in 58 and an eighth i think that's about all i can do with it because I mean, Lord knows if this angle is the same on both sides. So if you tried to match the angles, you might not be I just, it looks, it looks straight standing in front of it and sighting down it. So good enough. Well done. Okay, that's all welded on. Actually welded really nice. I'm actually impressed. Pretty much everything I've welded on this has been welding pretty dang decent. Um, for how nasty the metal looks on the outside. But uh, both sides and the top welded. I did not bother welding the bottom because you were all, I'd almost have to flip this thing up on its back to be able to weld it without the weld just falling out. And honestly, six and a half inches of weld up both sides and four inches of weld across the top. If you break that thing off, you accomplish something. So I think we'll be just fine. So I'll let that cool down, shoot some primer on it real quick. Before we put this on, I'm going to clean. I should have done it after I welded it and didn't even think about it. Shoot some primer on these, these guys so that uh it doesn't get any get crusty and uh then we'll put our valve stack on and do that part All right, that's all on. That turned out pretty nice. Um, that hose actually went on pretty good. I, I fought and fought and fought the stuff on the toolbar. This, I heated the ends up and it slid right on. Don't know what the difference is, but I'll take it. Um, the last thing we got to do here, aside from the, the hubs, is need to make some sort of holder 
It's my original intent was to have a hose barb here. If it, if, like that. And just have a hose all the way up to the toolbar. Now I'm thinking for storage purposes, because it'd be nice to get the hose coiled up and in the barn and out of the sun like I do on the nurse tank, is actually putting another coupling right here instead of a uh, hose barb. So I got a, a place to unhook it and take the section of hose from the cart to the toolbar. That way I can coil it up and get it in out of the sunlight so it doesn't degrade. Um, so that being said, I also need probably at least two, actually probably three, probably got to be one here, one just on the other side of the hitch pin and one part way up the uh, draw bar, depending on how long we end up. But I need some sort of holder for the hose. But if I make a holder for the hose, it also has to be big enough for an inch and a half coupling to pass through so that you can thread everything through and get it hooked up. So we'll probably have to make some real quick out of some round stock. So I was down digging through the steel rack looking to see what we had to make some hose holders out of and then I remembered. I've got these two old 543 planters up here and they kind of have a, have a ready-made deal already on them in the form of this right here. These would be for, they're the cable holders for the marker truck cables. Um, but all I've got to do is we'll have to heat them and open them up a little bit. And then, uh, because a two inch coupling will dang near pass. I already have, I took one off of that side a while ago for something and only used the bottom half of it. So I checked it and the two inch coupler will dang near fit through it already. So if I can make them big enough for a two inch coupler to fit through, an inch and a half coupler will slide through just fine. But uh, yeah, this saves me from having to start from scratch. Hopefully the bolts come off. I can't remember. I'm gonna make three, and if I only end up using two, so be it, but I'll have three ready to go. It's good to have junk equipment sitting around at times. Other times it's cluttered and annoys the crap out of me. All right, so I got my first one done. Unbending these things is not nearly as easy as you'd think it'd be. They don't want to, even with heat, they don't want to go in the direction you want them to go in. But if I can get them to match, I'll match somewhat close to that will be good because a two inch passes right through it. So if a two inch will, an inch and a half will.
all right that should take care of everything on the tongue so let me get those uh axle seals put in real quick and then this thing can get out of here well somebody at agco done screwed up at their number crossing over references because there ain't no way the id isn't even correct this measures uh two inches like 257 and some change and this measures uh two inches 271 and some, or two in like 2.271 and some change and 2.57 and some change so there ain't no way this is going in that hole and even if it did it's way too massive for that collar so i guess we're gonna have to figure something else out so i guess i could put this back on for now all right here we go uh there are a couple things we do with the toolbar too my bushings the correct bushings came in for the cylinders so we can get those put in um get the tongue put together which ain't gonna take that long and then once i get this cut to length and get it all hooked up i can figure out my hose length then i can run and get hoses and clamps and fittings and the stuff that i need to finish it up change chain hooks because depending on how long we make it you'll probably just come up in here somewhere with some chain and maybe even come somewhere I'm still leaning towards here just make a piece of flat flat iron with a chain hook on it and you just tack or hold it onto that put it eh, la, la. actually might not even have to I just take this top plate off and just weld the chain hook right to that top plate and put it back together and do and then it's just there but what do we need six feet we get clear of at a 90 degree turn six feet would get clear of the end of the hub so we want six foot past i forgot to bring a marker with me we want six foot past come on Tape measures they never stay straight when you want them to six foot so that's we're going to shorten it up about 12 inches because i think this is 13 if i remember right so that's going to be our starting point so we'll mark that cut it and get our hole drilled in the end all right so as long as this is and as hard as it is to get a hold of or i'm going to drill this side because i have a bottom dot and a vise so i can't through drill it because i don't as long as it is i want to have the full depth of the jaws holding it to keep it from trying to rock so i'm going to drill this side flip it over drill the other side i checked the ends nice and square that's not one important thing about building square things is you start with a good saw if you don't have a good saw then you're not gonna be able to build square things but we got to put these holes in it Thing set up on a saw stand so I actually we can just get rid of the chuck for the bit I got this thing set up on a saw stand so I don't really want to have I don't want to have to keep uh, setting it up and 
resetting it up. Part of the challenge of dealing with chunks this long is it's getting them figuring out the easiest way to handle them in the mill. All right, come out of there. There you go. All right, so unfortunately, that, uh, yeah, top link, well, weld on top link ball that I bought um, does not have enough rotation range of movement in it. Um, I mean, it'd be fine if this thing was always at this height. The problem arose when we picked it all the way up and measured off, and basically it bottomed it out. So if you went over a hump or something going into a field, you were going to break or bend something. So, um, just in order to get this finished up and usable and we can test it and use it and see if we needed to be, or need to be any changes made, rather than coming up with a big conglomerate of fanciness back here for a hitch, just going to go with a good old piece of one inch one by three flat stock put a pinhole in it use a regular hitch pin try it see how see how it handles if it's too sloppy we can figure out something different if it works good it works good we don't got to worry about it so probably want to bring that back a fairly decent amount and i'm just going to weld it that to make it easy to cut off if we want to do something different I'm just going to rather than slotting this and welding it inside the tube or anything just going to weld it right to the bottom so it's easy to cut off or um if it needs to be in a different or if it needs to change height we could flip it over and have it on top or whatever um how much we got to work with here and is that a one inch hole it is a one inch hole it needs to be opened up Probably don't want to open it up with a drill though because it looks like it had some sort of key slot in it. So we'll bring that out. If we come back six inches, that ought to be plenty. And then we'll go grab the hitch. Alright. I I lost you for about three hours there because I got this tack welded on. It's, I got like four one inch welds all the way around it because I didn't want to get too committed until we hook this thing together and go try it and make sure that my hole's going to work out and everything's going to work out. And went to put it all together and realized we didn't have any of the right length 5 8 bolts. So I figured while I was going to town, I would go ahead and get everything I needed. Naturally, still missed one thing, but it was because nobody had everything I needed. Um, apparently, forged steel turnbuckles are something nobody stocks. And uh, weld-on chain hooks are something nobody stocks. So... 
it's got some regular chain hooks and I'll make have to make my own weld on um, What was I saying? I'll just just make. I, I got some regular chain hooks. I will mill them or mill a flat on them, so I got and can just make those weld on. Um, luckily, we had some turnbuckles here that I kind of forgot we actually had. Um, so I got turnbuckles, but I need a way to hook the turnbuckles to the chain, and I didn't get anything because I didn't know what the turnbuckles we had here. I didn't know what they had on them for ends. So, tomorrow I will still probably have to run back to town and get something to hook the chain to the turnbuckles. But I got hooks, I got chain, I got hose, I got all the fittings we need to finish up. I got the bolts, I obviously got the bolts I needed. Um, I got hose clamps, so hopefully I can stand it. I mean, I know why, because they don't want it. The tolerance is super tight because it just makes an installation and everything, but you don't got quite probably enough room to get a flat washer in there to tighten that up, but it should be good. So let me hook these two together and we're going to go take a trial run. We got a dirt pile up there. I can back one wheel on and the other wheel on and back to what can back this thing down over the hill and try to simulate some of the, uh, angles it's going to be at and check and make sure everything's kosher so oh please there she be it's quite the train although it's really not honestly super long it's just going to be a matter of how well it handles Tell we got some weather blowing in because the wind keeps picking up and the temperatures Oops, don't wanna don't wanna lose my cap. The wind keeps picking up and the temperature keeps uh, dropping. It's not dropping fast, but it is dropping. It's supposed to be snowing tomorrow, which is why I wanted to get most of the outdoor work on this thing done today. Radio is playing in there. If I walk in, YouTube's gonna be pissed. Also, I keep forgetting, I gotta put oil in that gearbox. And I gotta get the wrench ordered for it so I can change settings easy. Just sitting like that. Still got plenty of slop in the pin. I drilled the hole. The pin is one inch. The hole in the clevis is one inch. I drilled the hole in the hitch bar inch and a quarter. Hopefully, hopefully that does the trick. I mean, it's not too extreme of an angle. Honestly, the angle looks worse on the hitch than it does on the tank. But the hitch is what we're worried about.
because I got to make some uh, spacers to put in between the hitch balls and the hitch frame to keep them up against that inside channel because they like to walk their way out and then it opens up your uh, clearance on your sway blocks. probably as steep as it will ever be it is in a little bit of a bind but going to do is turn it into a field and like if you got to go in a dip it's going to help you because the tool bar is going to go down so really it's really it would only be if you ever had to drive up which i've only got a few fields to do that most everything else you drive down into them of course driving back out you'd be driving up so i guess Maybe if we set that thing back up in the mill, shouldn't even have to take or cut it back off the bar, but set that back up in the mill and open that hole up to, uh, I think that's it. I put an inch and a quarter hole, so what's the next step up? I think our bits, I think our bits go in 16th increments, so maybe open it up another 16th. But, I mean, that's gonna that would be a pretty extreme such a ex, pretty extreme case right there <laughs> you get air in that one tire I think we're good open that hole up a little bit and that hitch is not nearly like I say, the hitch is not nearly as sloppy as I thought it'd be if it wasn't for the potential. Pulling in a straight line, you're not you're not going to hurt nothing, and it's not going to have a whole lot of drawbar weight or tongue weight. So you would have to do a lot. You would you would have to do a lot to put enough weight on this tongue to bend this box tube, at least to the point where it wouldn't spring back. So my main concern with the chains is when you're coming out of a row and you cut it hard to swing back down your next eight and that sudden jerk you put 
when you got to get the cart change direction is the biggest reason for the change and they'll be up a little bit back on the bar so they'll be pulling back and up so you'll take some of the tongue weight and you'll take pretty much all of the side to side out of it so i think we opened that pinhole up a little bit and i think we're good i'm i'm satisfied with it for now won't know any search until you actually use it use it you won't really know but and i mean you get into a situation like this where you got to go into a field okay you let the toolbar down a little bit to take some or put some slack in the tongue big deal because all of it well, we checked it i stuck a, a receiver in the hitch on our little car trailer and it won't have enough it, it won't give you near this much action um don't want a pentanol hitch a they're too freaking expensive and b they're too damn sloppy there's just too much that just don't want to screw with a pentanol hitch so but i mean it's not that sloppy i'm, I'm kind of impressed so i think i've seen what i needed to see all right some final things while it's still hooked up i got my two locations marked out where i want my hose holders to be well basically i measured it's 11 and a half from the center of the pin to this one so i figured 11 and a half from the center of the pin of that one and then 11 and a half from the center of the bolt to that one not that this one matters because it's not doing any moving it's just symmetry i guess um i measured out where i want my chain hook to be that right there is going to be seven foot from where it's going to be up there nice round number um and i'm going to mount them kind of at an angle like a 45 degree angle coming off this corner of the box tube that way we're, we got a nice up angle heading up towards that way we're, we're pulling a little bit of weight off of it not a lot but I did get grade 43 chain, which is, I think, 26.50 uh, working load. So, a little over 5,000 pounds total between the two. They'll, they'll never see 5,000 pounds of pull. But, uh, I think that's all we needed while it's hooked up. I'll do the hose. I want to wait till I got the holders on to do the hose. Um so that can wait um as far as the jack goes i think i'm just going to do a simple i ain't gonna buy an actual jack for this thing i'll just make a drop leg up real quick and either with a pinch bolt or just a pin with a or something for a drop leg on that when the time comes to need to do that um so i think the only thing i'm hoping i should just be able to leave this hooked up and stuff it down in the barn that way I don't got to rehook it up tomorrow. Like I say, tomorrow's supposed to be snowing, so I'm trying to think of all the outside longer stuff that's going to have to happen. Um, I guess I can unfold real quick and we can change out those cylinder pins. Or the, the bushings, I mean. homemade ones come on come on and then these are actual they're spring loaded so that they'll drive in there and not move around and that's what these are actually made to do is uh, bush these pins down or bush cylinder pins down
simple as that all right bushings are changed out so i gotta get the tongue back off here put it in the garage and tomorrow we should just have a little bit of machining a little bit of welding probably another test run once every or once we get everything situated and the chains and everything uh, make bushings for the hitch so get that slop out of it and make the hose and that should pretty much finish it up as far as getting it to the point of being operable so looks like you're gonna have to adjust some of the sway stops too bring those things to the straightforward position so anyhow i'm gonna get things put away and call her a day so we'll catch you guys first thing in the morning all right see if we can't finish this bad boy up today uh i already got my hole punched out bigger i did not weld anything yet um we got to make some weld on chain hooks so first thing we got to do is cut the clevises off of them because obviously you don't need the clevis uh just gonna do that with a grinder and then i might set them up in the mill and scuff a flat on the back of them just to make them set level we'll see but first off let's get these things cut down to a workable size later you got you some weld on chain hooks so those can get welded on these can get welded on and that can get welded solid because even if i gotta do any more modifying to this hole it's easy you just lay this in the vise upside down so this is up and you can do basically whatever you need to it but shouldn't really have to do anything to it from here on out hopefully
and that should take care of the draw bar uh tabs well done solid got my hose holders i made them to where they're off they're offset to this side of the draw bar because once you get down there the hose has got to be on this side to get to the valve so i figured just leave them all over here I had initially thought about heating them here and bending them and rotating them so that the, the eye was up on the center, but I was like, eh. And I don't think they're made, hopefully, we'll see if they they stay, I mean, there's no yanking or pressure on them, so they shouldn't break, but I'm, not, I'm thinking that these were made out of some sort of, I'm not going to say spring steel, but I don't think they were also just made out of regular mild steel because uh had trouble tacking them they kept wanting to break off because the steel was crystallizing at the weld so i'm thinking there's some sort of goofy alloy to give them some sort of springiness since they'd be holding hoses on well this these wouldn't be holding hoses they were cable holders but to give them some sort of resistance from bending out of shape when they got knocked around so but I don't think they're going to break off and then the hooks are on so next thing we got to do is get the plates off of the toolbar for the drop legs so we can weld the hooks on those Alright, got the hooks welded on toolbar side. So before I bring it up here, gonna make my spacers for the uh lower link hitch balls. Just needs to be an inch and a quarter long for an inch and an eighth pin. I found this uh mechanical tubing sitting down in the scrap pile that'll work good. Just need to bore it out for an inch and an eighth. So Chin and eight. That is in chin. Actually, that's probably the one I want. Just to see how things went, I made my first chain. Uh, I got my spacer blocks, or my spacers put in on the three-point. Um, the one thing I'll still have to do, I didn't know that Dad had made narrower uh, spacers for behind the sway plates on, on the arms. For It's either for the three-point or for the, the snowblower or the stump grinder. So I'll have to figure out, or doesn't matter but i gotta put the correct one inch thick spacer plates on there and then that should take up the vast majority of the rest of the slop in the three point but we already improved it greatly getting the, the hitch balls where they need to be um 
also it's snowing now keep in mind it was 60 degrees yesterday but uh we can get this other chain done one two three four five six seven eight 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. 8 so I need to lengthen that just a little bit you can't ever get the things to come out when you want them to and when you just want them to stay there for a minute before you stake them they just always fall out Link on the other side, but it'll still get the job done. me nuts come back here you little bugger your sirens. If somebody's in trouble or something's on fire. Wouldn't surprise me if something's on fire. We've actually had a couple around here in the last few days. Alrighty boys and girls. What's this video 16? Plus the three or whatever it is I did last summer. So 19 videos later and almost a year in the making. 
although the vast majority of the work's happened in the last two months it is finally functionally done if i wanted to go put on 28 tomorrow in theory it should do it um hoses ran draw bars done obviously this is all pending the first use and i'm sure we'll use it this season and figure out all the things that should have done different or would like to change about it but uh for right now we're gonna call it done other than obviously got to figure out something for axle seals probably gonna end up either we're gonna remachine something depending on which seals we can for what kind what we can find for seals regardless gonna have to remachine the collars that you that set bearing load and everything and the seal runs on but depending on what seal we end up going with might have to remachine the collars and bore the hubs um just to get it to some sort of industry standard off the shelf seals so we don't got to go through this bull crap ever again so but other than that i mean when the weather finally straightens out we're gonna have to fill the tank up with water and leak check it and make sure everything's good to go and probably hook it up and run water through the whole system and make sure everything's kosher um put my quick disconnects up there at the pump so that we can get that thing off of there for storage or if i ever need to work on it you don't got to try to unhook the hoses you just undo the couplers and you can take the pump off um oh while i got it down here real quick or before i unhook it from the tractor i'll uh reset make sure all these uh sway stops are facing forward some of them need it adjusted if they come loose hopefully they come loose but other i mean other than like a couple little piddly odds and ends that are more want to do rather than have to do i he's ready to go so let's make one more little test drive to see how our uh hitch has changed and oh and the other thing i'm going to do before i'm going to throw some at least some primer possibly some paint on the tongue but uh i'm going to cut this hose holder back off and shorten it to get rid of this uh steep dive right here kind of because it's pulling up on the coupler a little bit and i'd rather not have that so if i could probably take whatever i need to do to get it roughly in line with this i'll measure it before i take it off but anyhow like it's Let's see if i can get something to land in my hand like these are some pretty big can't do it. these are like big big flakes this rig up real quick all right i think we're good there's still, i mean there's still a little a little tension on the pin but it ain't nearly as bad as it was so not a super huge amount of tension on the chains the hose is plenty long this this is a very extreme case it's not very often that and most of the time if you're going over ground to contour like this it's because you're in the field and the tool toolbar's in the ground so this ain't gonna happen that often so i think with that we're just gonna call it good and run it and see what problems we come up with and fix them from there all right now i'm gonna move that hose holder real quick and shoot a coat of shiny on that thing and call it a day so um there might be one more video on this thing this week uh depending on how things go and what i feel like doing i might uh get a rough list together of about what it costs to build this thing and we'll talk about uh the project a little bit and some of the compromises and stuff and along the way and yada 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 but uh it feels good to have that out of the way holy cow now we can move on to other stuff got 
more track i got i got the 1800 service but i still got seven more that need to get done before spring still haven't looked at the planter yet still haven't top dressed wheat yet gotta start spreading fertilizer when the ground gets dry enough to get over gotta finish chisel plowing got the trip to iowa coming up it's just all sorts of stuff starting to come to a head here at saying at one time that being said the only thing that i'm doing to the planter this year is just, i'm going to put bullseye seed tubes on it um but anyhow i guess with that being said that's it for this one we'll catch you guys on the next one